Hello everyone. In this talk, I'm going to um, discuss a technique that is widely used in local computation and uh, explain an application for solving a global problem. In particular, I'm going to talk about neighborhood covers and uh, some applications in uh, hopsets and hence distance approximation. Um, and I will briefly mention some implications in parallel and distributed distance computation, but in general, I won't get into details of specific models for this talk. And for that, I will refer you to the following papers. Uh, one is uh, by myself uh, for congested clique model in, in particular. And there are also other um, older results uh, that uh, uh, look at this problem in PRAM. Um, so uh, let me start by a definition. A neighborhood cover uh, for an undirected graph is a clustering of all nodes such that all neighborhoods, uh, meaning balls uh, around each node, are covered and that the clusters have small overlap. Um, I, I will define it more formally later, but um, generally these are very widely uh, used in solving local problems. For example, coloring, MIS, vertex cover, matching, um, in distributed settings in particular. Uh, they're less studied for distance problems. Um, they are studied for uh, computing case spanners. Uh, and also they're studied for uh, computing tree embeddings in various models. Uh, but uh, my uh, goal is to talk about more global distance problems, such as single source shortest paths, all per uh, shortest paths, multi source shortest paths. Um, and uh, th the point is that it, for these types of problems, generally, um, we require a lot of uh, uh, resources, like communication and time resources. And these are more challenging than these local problems for uh, many models. Um, and in particular, running basic algorithms such as BFS or Bellman Ford is slow because they uh, have running time dependent on diameter, which could be very large. Uh, so uh, I will briefly describe how we can use neighborhood covers um, to construct a tool called a hopset that will allow us to approximate distances more efficiently. Uh, let me start by uh, defining what a W neighborhood cover is more formally. Uh, again, a W neighborhood cover is a clustering of nodes with three properties. The first property is that each cluster should, has, should have small diameter. Uh, in, in particular, for parameter W, the cluster uh, diameter should be uh, W log N. The second property is uh, that for each node V, uh, the W neighborhood, meaning the ball of radius W around V, should fully be contained in a cluster. And the third property is a low congestion property, which says that each node should overlap at most with both log N clusters. You can see why the first and third properties would be uh, useful in uh, distributed uh, algorithms in particular. Um, there are already some algorithms known uh, for computing W neighborhood covers in various models. Uh, for example, in PRAM, for people who are familiar with it, this, uh, this can be, uh, these can be constructed using the exponential shift low diameter decomposition algorithms by Miller, Peng, uh, Waldo, and Shu. Um, using this algorithm requires uh, roughly of W uh, rounds in parallel and roughly of M work. Um, so for large values of W, uh, this could take a long time, um, both in this uh, model and in other models. Uh, but there are recent results that uh, uh, show how we can do this faster. For example, in Congest, it's, it was recently shown how to uh, construct these efficiently in a paper by Becker, Emek, and Lenzen. And in Congested Click, I explained how we can use this, uh, how, how we can uh, construct these in Pollock and rounds. Uh, but uh, also, for most of the applications, uh, people have considered uh, small values of W. Uh, but what I want to point out here is that if we consider a wide range of um, radi radii for uh, clusters, 
then we can uh, use these structures to solve a more global problems such as shortest path. Uh, so let me start by defining what a hopset is. Um, and then I'll explain uh, how neighborhood covers are used for constructing them. Uh, given a graph G, uh, a weighted graph, uh, a beta epsilon hopset is a set of edges such that between every pair of nodes, uh, there is a path of at most beta hops using the hopset edges with length at most uh, within one plus epsilon of the uh, distances in G. So intuitively, uh, adding hops at edges is kind of like adding shortcut edges that uh, reduce the diameter up to some uh, approximate factor in, in the stretch. Uh, for example, in this simple line graph, if we add these uh, red edges, uh, it's easy to see that there is a path of at most three hops that preserve the distances exactly. Um, and of course, these edges have to be weighted. So here's how um, they can be used for faster distance computation. Uh, given a beta epsilon hop set, we can generally compute uh, distances within one plus epsilon approximation in roughly beta rounds in various models. Uh, for example, in distributed settings, we can just run Bellman Ford for beta rounds, and we can show that we can get a one plus epsilon approximation uh, using the hopset edges. And generally, the goal is to construct a sparse hopset with small hop bound. Hop bound is what directly impacts the running time, and sparsity is important for um, communication or memory uh, reasons. And of, of course, we also want to be able to compute these fast. Uh, and this is how we will use neighborhood covers to co construct a hopset. Uh, so this algorithm is a variation of a classical algorithm by Cohen. Um, uh, and uh, this is how it works. So uh, in each iteration of the algorithm, we consider a, a specific distance range. Uh, in particular, we will uh, deal with all pairs of nodes that have distance within uh, a range, let's say R to 2R. Um, using this algorithm. Uh, first, we compute W neighborhood covers by setting W uh, to be epsilon R over uh, log N, roughly. Uh, so note that here, um, for approximating, uh, approximating paths of length roughly R, we are um, preserving balls of radius roughly R over log N. So there's this log N factor difference here. Uh, then we will consider two cases. Uh, we'll consider clusters that are small, uh, which are clusters that have size uh, at most square root n, and otherwise we call a cluster big. Uh, so here's uh, how we add the hops at edges. For each big cluster, we add a star rooted at the center um, of the cluster. This, this center is well defined based on the uh, neighborhood cover algorithm. And whenever we add an edge, we set the weight to be the exact distance uh, between the two endpoints um, in, in the original graph. Uh, and for big cluster centers, we add a click in between all of them. And we uh, add a click for each small cluster. Uh, inside each small cluster, we add a click. Uh, I'll. Um, show this uh, with picture. Um, first, we add a star rooted at the center of each big cluster. Then we add a click inside each small cluster. And we add a click between all big cluster centers. Uh, so here's a high level idea of why we're doing the things this way. Uh, so there, there can't be too many big clusters. There can be at most square root n big clusters. So um, we can uh, add edges in between all of them, and we wouldn't be adding too many edges. We would only add a linear number of edges. And on the other hand, for small clusters, because their size is small, we can afford to um, uh, add all uh, 
click edges uh, in, inside them. And uh, we can show that uh, this will lead to a sparse opposite. I'm, I'm not going to uh, go into size analysis details, uh, but let me briefly explain um, uh, why we get uh, a logarithmic hop bound using this construction. So again, consider a path of length between R to 2R. Uh, this path uh, can be divided into log n over epsilon uh, segments uh, such that each segment has to be fully contained in a cluster. Uh, this, this is basically how we define neighborhood covers. We, we said uh, any path of length epsilon r over log n should be fully contained inside a cluster. Uh, now, uh, here's uh, what happens with respect to the edges we've added. Uh, for each small cluster, we've uh, added a clique, so there is one single edge that connects the two endpoints uh, with the exact distance. Now, assume that there is one single big cluster on the whole path, uh, in that case, um, this cluster will add an additive factor of epsilon r, which is the diameter of the cluster, and there will be um, two edges corresponding to this uh, single uh, big cluster, uh, which is the, the edges that go from one endpoint to the center and from the center to the other endpoint. Uh, but uh, the more important case is when there are at least two big clusters on the path, and in this case, we've added a direct edge between the two furthest uh, big clusters on the path. So intuitively, the idea is that uh, by adding a click between big cluster centers, we're kind of um, reducing the whole um, number of hops between these uh, two endpoints uh, of the path. And this is uh, how we can get the uh, hop bound. Remember that uh, we had log n over epsilon segments, and uh, we basically showed that we are kind of adding um, roughly log n over epsilon times a constant, a, a constant a number of edges uh, for all of these clusters. Uh, so we'll get stretch one plus epsilon and um, hop bound uh, roughly log n over epsilon. Uh, so here's a couple of implications. Uh, when we construct hop sets, we can use them to, um, as I said, uh, to solve single source shortest path and multi source shortest paths uh, up to one plus epsilon um, approximation. Uh, this was, for example, done in PRAM um, to uh, compute distances in near optimal work. Uh, in congestive clique, I showed how we can use this co construct sparse hop sets uh, only in polylogarithmic grounds. Uh, I should also mention that it was already known how to construct hop sets in polylogarithmic ground in congestive clique, but uh, the difference is that uh, using this approach, we can construct sparser hop sets, which mean that we, uh, we are required to store far fewer edges. Uh, and uh, for people who are familiar with it, this algorithm can also be extended to low memory MPC with uh, overall extra memory, uh, but uh, only in polylogarithmic number of rounds. And generally in MPC, we, we would like to get algorithms that uh, run in less than polylogarithmic number of rounds. Uh, so this is where I will finish with an, with an important open problem. Um, in order to get better bounds, the first step is to get a sub-logarithmic algorithm for constructing neighborhood covers. And that is uh, a, an interesting open problem in a lot of models. Um, so that's it. Um, please feel free to reach out with any questions. Thank you.